On today's episode of the Cryptoverse, crypto price analysis, the technicals and a bit of the fundamentals. That's what I'd like to focus on in this video. So for the uninitiated, the technicals, that means the charts and the fundamentals, that means real world usage and adoption. So all of that on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. So stay right there. Hi there guys, welcome to the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I'm your host, Chris Coney. So the technicals then, let's focus on Bitcoin. So the first thing I'll say, which I don't think can be said often enough, is this. We want prices to rise, right? We really want prices to rise, don't we? You want prices to rise, I want prices to rise. We all want prices to rise. And the stronger we want prices to rise, the more likely we are to see evidence of that, whether it's there or not. Even if it's not happening, we will have the tendency to see the evidence of it, even if it's not really there. The same works in reverse, though. If you are strongly pessimistic, then you are likely, even more likely to see evidence of that even if it's not really happening. And this is especially true when it comes to looking at technical analysis, right? Now this happens because of deletion. It's a process by which the brain receives certain inputs, obviously through the senses, but it stops short of delivering them to our conscious awareness. So you know, all of the things that come within your visual range, they go into your eyes as input. but you don't receive every detail coming into your eyes to your conscious awareness, right? So this is happening all day, every day, all the time on all subjects, okay? No matter what. And this mechanism, it has a positive purpose, right? It's to basically aid our conscious awareness from being completely overwhelmed by every single detail of the world around us, right? That's, that's what it's for. Unfortunately though, this mechanism Often, um, it results in us perceiving things in an inaccurate way. Meaning, it often means that what eventually reaches our conscious awareness ends up being an inaccurate version of reality, okay? So the very fact that we do this with chart reading is what makes technical analysis and trading so difficult. It's this deletion mechanism that makes it so difficult because we're not we're not entirely seeing exactly what's on the charts it's somewhat distorted which is what you know from what's on the screen to what we actually receive in our conscious awareness is different and that's what makes chart reading analysis and trading so difficult so so i also believe this this mechanism we've just described here is also why so many people think technical analysis doesn't actually work. They've probably learned a bit about technical analysis, they've probably tried it, their experience is it hasn't worked for them, and they blame it on technical analysis because they're not accounting for this potential sabotage from their own brain mechanism, right? So I'll put a full stop there. <clears throat> Next point. This mechanism is why having lots of technical analysis, video, analysis videos on YouTube from lots of different people is a good thing. Even if they don't all agree, and that's even more important. Watch a watching a bunch of different people analyze the same chart, that reduces the risk of you seeing the situation just from one point of view, which is your point of view. And the same goes for me as well. So any single analyst can be wrong, but it's ultimately your responsibility to gather all the information together put it together and then decide what you are going to do as a result. Because you can blend all of the analysts, you know, conclusions together, but what's not included in that is your own take on it, your unique point of view. And it's not foolproof either, by the way, and I don't want to overcomplicate this, but even what any given analyst says can also be filtered out by this brain mechanism that I just described. So. 
it's um, it's at mercy of that as well. So the stuff that most often gets deleted is the stuff that conflicts with what we already believe. That's generally how it works. And because we're always looking for, some people call it confirmation bias, whereas the brain picks out details that we already agree with to reinforce our rightness and deletes details that would prove us wrong because we don't want to be proved wrong. But that means sometimes what we think is right is actually not good for us, right? We might lose money if we're trading and it can affect other areas of our lives, but we're using this brain mechanism right now specifically when we're looking at the crypto markets. Ironically enough though, those blind spots, let's call them, are often where most of the value is, right? The value is in what we are missing if we are willing to accept it. And that's that's on the basis that if you're already getting all the results that you want, then the details you're missing don't matter, right? But if you're not getting the results you want, it must be because there's something outside your conscious awareness that you are missing, right? So that's why I say it's the stuff outside your conscious awareness, the stuff that's being deleted that holds the most value, because that's probably the key to changing your results, which is why I'm talking about it, right? Now, I'm taking my time with this whole intro on purpose. This is kind of half the content I wanted to talk about today. So don't just skip straight to the chart analysis, right? That would be a perfect example of deleting information that's critical, right? You say, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. And you just go straight to the chart reading and then, you know, miss a critical piece of info, which oddly enough, ironically, paradoxically, is deleting information about the brain's deletion mechanism. So that would be kind of spooky, wouldn't it? That would be a a rip in the space-time continuum. (laughs) Anyway, final point before we get into the actual analysis itself. I am also human, which means I also possess the ability to delete information from my senses. I have a brain, I have a reticular activation system, therefore happens to me. And as you all no doubt have heard me say before, if you are a regular viewer of the Cryptoverse, meditation has gone a long way Uh, in reducing the effect of this whole brain mechanism deletion thing. But ultimately, as long as you have a system, like a trading system, then you can still be affected by this deletion process, miss miss details, but still make money. That's the real benefit of a trading system. So never mind that. Let's begin the actual chart analysis, shall we? We'll begin with the Bitcoin daily chart. So I'm now going to switch over to my screen here. I'm using Coinigy as I always do. So here is good old Bitcoin against the US dollar. And I've stripped all the indicators, all the volume, all the moving averages, everything out of this. So this is a view from down here, April 2017, all the way through to July 2018. Well, yeah, in a few days, it will be July 2018. So that's 15 months and a couple of days short, if you like. Now, my eye, it immediately snaps to a floor at around 6,000. I didn't know it was 6,000 when you first look at it. You just notice that there is a definitive floor here where the price, you know, finds support. So what I'm going to do is draw a horizontal line there and feel free to stop and start this video and follow along. So... I'll use the trend line tool. I'll select horizontal line. I'll just plop it roughly where I see the support line. I'll thicken it up for the benefit of the recording here, but also make sure it's white because I also make it show up quite nicely. And also I'm going to edit the settings on this. Go to coordinates and make sure it's right on 6,000. So I'm entering the number manually. And then it's a good idea to click the lock button so you don't accidentally drag it away if you are you know, clicking on other tools as you go. Now, to me, this is the most important point on the whole chart that we're looking at here. So the horizontal line we've got, and um, while the chart shows this sort of October rally from 2017, we went from around $4,200 at the beginning of the month to $6,000 by the end of the month. You can hardly see it now from this perspective because, you know, we're including this big run up to 20K. So the perspective is all skew if, but 
we'll, we'll maybe come back to this a bit later, but the point I'm making here about this October situation was that this was the first time Bitcoin had hit 6,000 or got anywhere near it. So it was testing its all-time high and it tested it a few times, but then the first week in November here, it breaks out decisively and then hitting a high of like 7,000. And then it pulls back very briefly to 6,000. It kind of goes under it for, it happened for less than 24 hours from November the 12th to the November the 13th last year. And then over the next month, it rallies all the way up to 20,000, right? Gaining like 300% in four weeks. So that's when 6,000 and its first badge of significance. It was the last line of defense down here before the 20K run up. So from, from a psychological perspective, I would say, it's, it's in the memory of the masses, right? But I'm not the only trader to have noticed this as well. So it's not just the mass of amateur traders that noticed, you know, the 6,000 was where the big bull run began. But if I've seen this, it's a very simple technical read. It's consolidation, resistance underneath 6,000, a break, a test, and then a massive parabolic move up. So if I've spotted that, many, many other traders have spotted it as well. So next, 6K and its second badge of significance on the 6th of February. So back to the charts once again. The 6th of February is right here. This was when the whole thing reversed itself. And in 51 days, it dropped 70% all the way back down to 6K. Now, this is where the measuring tool in Coinigy and TradingView becomes very useful because you can measure both time and price. Allow me to demonstrate. It's this thing here. It looks like a ruler up the side, a ruler at the bottom, and it has two candlesticks in it and it differs from the long position, short, short position tool. So here I can just, once you've got the tool selected, all you do is click where you want it to begin. So 14th of November, click once, and then you just move your mouse. You don't have to hold the mouse down. As you move up, it's measuring the percentage move and also the timing. So on the, it would be the 17th of December, we'd hit a high of 19,891, according to, that would be the Bitfinex price, right? Uh, let's see, 19,891. That's uh, close enough, 95. Unfortunately, you can't actually specify the numbers with the measuring tool, you have to click and click. So it measured it 33, 34 days, and uh, measures the price movement in Satoshis and all the rest of it, right? So feel free to plot that if you want, and. Uh, get your numbers yourself. So I'm giving 6,000 the, the second badge of honor right there because it's it stopped, actually stopped the price crash, right? Right in its tracks. So, you know, when we say here, the, the measuring tool was all the way up to 20K, the second badge of honor is down here, 6th of February, where it pulls off of its highs and comes all the way down again. So measuring tool, you can just click at the top, pull it down to where it hit 6,000 for the second time, around about, well, actually on the 6th of February, according to Bitfinex, and that measures a 51 day and a 69, call it 70% move down, right? So that's why I'm giving 6,000 its second badge of honor right here, because it stopped this massive price crash of 70% dead. The, and also the price makes a hard bounce here and rallies right back up to 11,500, before making this double top pattern. It's like an M shape, right? Before it continues its downtrend. Now this hard bounce, right, at 6,000, it's pretty easy to explain psychologically, right? And I say that based on the first badge of honor, 6K was the most logical place to get in. If for people who say missed the parabolic move and who wanted a chance to get in on what we all believed to be a second wind, right? which turned out not to be true, but a lot, of, a lot of us bought into that. And to be fair, this rally back up to 11,500, that was the second wind.
for many of us, again me included, we were hypnotized by the previous parabolic move. We desperately wanted to see it again, so we didn't take the opportunity to sell. So speaking of deletions and this brain mechanism we talked about, this is a classic double top reversal pattern, which went exactly the way the technical analysis suggests it would. Double top and then a reversal down to, well, it's a reversal. So it came in on a, on a rally, so it reversed to the downside. But again, as the price got back near 6K down here, well, the buyers stepped back in for the next rally. But this time it only went back to 10K. So, and now more recently, we're testing 6K once again. So each rally, sort of, it's, it's not reaching as high as it did in the previous cycle. So the original breakout of 20K, the hard bounce on the 6th of February, the fact that the price was repelled away from 6K in April time, right, after the double top, they're all the reasons that I say that 6K is the most significant level on that whole chart over that 15 month period. So now moving to more recent price action, 6K continues to be the key level to watch. What's different this time is that 6K wasn't a hard line. So let's have a look. Let's go back to the charts, let's get rid of this. Let's zoom in now to the most recent price action. Because what I want to look at is the 22nd of June, which is this red candle right here, and the 24th of June, which is this sort of dragonfly doji candle right here. On these two days, Bitcoin did trade below 6,000. Right, that had not happened since, I think it was the 13th of November 2017. Up until then, 6K had not broken, as we just saw in the April, where it repelled the price, and February the 6th, where it actually hard stopped the crash. So that's the negative view, but to avoid the pessimism taking over, right, this is where we exercise, you know, our conscious mind to make sure we're not doing that deletion thing. Um, to avoid the pessimism taking over, I would force myself to look for counter indicators and actually find one, actually, which is that on, this is the Bitfinex chart, chart at least, Bitcoin never actually closed the day below 6,000. So to be honest, that's a bit of a weak argument because it only really takes someone looking at the chart at a different time zone uh, to see that candlestick close below 6,000. So it's only because of the time zone that I'm in that the candle happened not to close, you know, below 6K. It just happened that my time zone straddles it. So it's not a very strong argument, even when I try and put on my optimistic hat. So basically at the moment, we're still looking bearish. But I'm not going to leave the analysis there, though. Let's get into a bit of the detail about more recent price patterns that I've noticed. So what I'm going to do now is go back to the chart, switch over to the four hour. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to simplify the price movements. So let's go four hour chart. Let's zoom out a little bit here. Uh, four hour. Yes, we've got that going. I'm going to try and simplify these these price movements. And I'm going to do it right about to the beginning of May again. Right. So I'm going to simplify these these moves by basically drawing straight lines that run right through the middle of the price action to make the patterns more obvious. And I'm going to do that back here to the beginning of May, like I said, round about where we thought the consensus rally would begin and run for the rest of the year. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to use the trend line tool. I'm going to change it from the horizontal line to the trend line. And I can do things like, let's zoom in a little bit more here. So here's a bit of a rally straight through the middle. And then we can do one, let's do this, take the auto zoom off. There's one right there. Simplify that move, simplify the previous rally, and cross the lines over a touch. You'll see the logic in this in just a moment. I'm doing this so you can follow along. There's a dip. Let's zoom out here. Let's see what else we've got. I think we've got a couple more. Actually, that's one big one. I'm just going to call that one big one right there. There we go. And then I'll just do the more recent ones from the last few weeks down there. Righty ho. So that's pretty good. That's what I wanted to see. So this is what I mean when I say I've simplified the price movements. And I'll do I'll do the more recent price action in just a second. But for now, I wanted to make a comment on this. 
So what I've, the reason I've done that is to make the the waves more obvious, to kind of some of delete some of the the noise in the candlestick patterns themselves. So I look at this and I think, well, these rallies are shorter in time than the dips, and then I think, well, the rallies are actually getting shorter. So just look at the length of the line. This one's longer than this one, right? And this actually this dip's quite a long one, isn't it? The first one. So this to me, this charts the sentiment pretty well. Right? Once the buyers in these gentle rallies are exhausted, there's a lot of selling pressure that then takes over, resulting in, the, in these sharp drops. And I would, ordin I would ordinarily expect patterns like that to continue. Well, all things being equal anyway. However, this pattern is now being interfered with by reaching 6,000, which we've just explored being a key level for specific reasons. So all of that emotional memory um, that we've spoken about already is now coming back into play. All that psychological memory, emotional memory rather, from 6K and all the reasons it's got badges of honor and badges of significance are now bubbling back up to the surface. I mean, even now, if we look back at the four hour chart, we could, we could draw another mini rally and a dip at the most recent price action. So if I stretch the chart to get like the last few days as a price action. I could even do one like this and a little mini rally. And then I could draw one like that to simplify that price action. And again, when I look at this, you know, this is as much data as we've got, so we can't draw any more cycles than this. And again, for people who missed the 20K rally and for the people who have been waiting to get into Bitcoin for the first time, this 6K level would be the most logical place to get in since that run up to 6K was far more rational than the run up to 20K. I'm talking about the original run up to 6K before it was ever broken. So some would argue that even the original run up to 6K Bitcoin was irrational. But at least back in October of 2017, the price actually consolidated just below 6,000 before the breakout. So if you want to see what I'm talking about there, let's go quickly back to the daily chart, stick the auto zoom back on, and let's scroll all the way back to the end of 2017 here. So I've locked that white line in so that we know where 6K is. This is what I mean. These are daily candles. So this area here that I'm talking about, this is what I'm, I'm saying is more rational, where it consolidated just below 6K before deciding to break out, is much more rational than that parabolic move up to 20,000, right? So that's just to set the context for why I'm saying now, people who are looking to get into Bitcoin for the first time, back to the four hour, this is a good point to get in for those newbies. So that's, that's what I'm getting at there. Now, despite everything I've said about the brain deleting information, the need to challenge our beliefs, you know, the need to expose yourself to different multiple analysis from different chart analysts and all that sort of stuff. Despite all that, you probably still want me to tell you what I think is going to happen. <laughs> Don't you? Of course you do. Well, of all the analysis I've done myself, of all the other analysts that I've listened to and studied, the person that makes the most sense to me, and I've mentioned this guy before, it's Juan Villaverde, right? The brains behind the wise cryptocurrency ratings. His model predicts that the most likely scenario is that Bitcoin will now consolidate for the next couple of months, barring any major external you know, market shocks, positive or negative. So if you want the ins and outs of that analysis, then, you know, and how he came to that conclusion and how his model, you know, predicts that kind of stuff, you'll have to sign up for his service. But suffice to say that based on the analysis that he offers, it's the one that makes the most sense to me alongside my own analysis. Right, so that's the cliff notes for you. On the on the optimistic side, though, given enough of a time horizon, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and blockchains, they're inevitably going to systematically replace all the systems that we have in the world now that require trust. That's always the backstop to all this. If you go to the most meta level, that's always the saving grace after all the analysis. So if you can afford to buy, then buy, not financial advice. If you can afford to hodl, then hodl, not financial advice. 
And if you want to learn how to you know, trade using a system that will help you to compensate for that mental mechanism that deletes information, then check out my online course, which is The Master Cryptocurrency Trader, which is available at a discount for the first 50 students at the link in the video description. So that's all I've got for you today. So if you like this episode, go ahead, hit the like button. If you want to leave me some feedback, post a link down below. And if you want to follow my future videos and get notified when I publish new ones, click subscribe, click the bell. But there we go. Also check out the online courses. 30 day money back guarantee. But that's all I've got for you today, guys. So I'll be back with the next episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me. Chris Coney saying, bye for now.